Hello YouTubers, in this video we're going to be discussing uh, primarily empirical probabilities or experimental probabilities as opposed to classical probabilities. So I think our primary duty uh, off the bat here will be to distinguish between classical and empirical probabilities. So uh, classical probability involves uh, basically its, its major thing that sets it apart, experiments in which all possible outcomes are equally likely to occur. So for example, drawing names out of a hat, you know, I'm equally likely to draw one name as opposed to another, or rolling a die, or flipping a coin, or, or you know, giving birth to a child and it being a girl or a boy, even though we can look at the numbers and say that, you know, it's not exactly 50%. Uh, but those are theoretical probabilities, whereas experimental probabilities or empirical probabilities, um, we say basically assume that certain outcomes are not so equally likely. So like we could actually get data and keep track of it and look at these data. So basically if we were to gather all the people say in a room and do blood typing and determine how many A's, B's, O's, and AB's there are, we could necessarily come up with a likelihood that somebody chosen at random from a non-equally likely case of course, uh, but would have say a certain type looking at what we already know about the sample that we took. So we do have a formula for empirical probabilities. It is necessarily almost the exact same thing as what you see for classical probabilities, but we say the probability of an event occurring. And notice we write this still probability of an event. Okay, uh, but is equal to frequency for the class, or F, divided by total frequencies in the distribution, or N, or total number of data in the data set, and we have frequency. So two numbers we're very used to. We're going to look at the uh, frequency distribution we've got over here on the left, but um, so keep in mind this is called an empirical probability and it's based on observation. So we, so we experiment, we see, we collect, okay? See, collect, and gather, and, and base assumptions based on this, we infer. So let's take a look at example number 10 down here in the bottom. We say a soft drink survey, say it was given, and respondents were asked whether they liked the taste of soft drink. So, you know, our choices here are yes, no, or undecided, but you notice we did collect data on these things. And the total number of people here, it's good to put in a column for this, 25 those. We had 15 yeses, 8 noes, and 2 undecided. So perhaps we want to find the likelihood that a person selected at random from the study responded. No. Now, I just want to point one thing out why we're doing this in the first place. But we actually would collect this data, of course, to get an idea of what people think about this. But based upon our sample of 25 individuals, which is a small sample, we could, we could uh, you know, to a certain extent, uh, conjecture about the entire population. So if 15 out of 25 people say yes, then what percentage of the entire population would also say yes? That's really what we're finding here. So we say, okay, so the probability, uh, probability, they said no. So we say, all right, well, the entire sample space collected 25 people or uh, consisted of 25 people. We say of the people that, that had answered out of all of them in our sample space, we had the event that we had no. There were eight people that gave us the event of no. So we say eight out of 25. Uh, this is approximately 0. Point, and I actually do want to find this here. Uh, 8 divided by 25. So we get 32%. Oh, I should have known that. So 0. 0.32, 0. 0.32, which is approximately 32%. So now I cannot say that 32% of the population will say no, but I do know that the population is probably similar to my sample, and my sample had 32% of people say no. So Again, this experimental probability is based on we actually had the data. It's not theoretically happening that way. That's the way it happened. So how about we find the probability the person selected at random from the study did not reply no. So probability, this is weird, uh, no bar, the complement of no, would be the same thing as 1 minus the probability that they did say no. Okay, using our formulas for complements. We say 1 minus the 0.32 that we just found. So the probability that they actually did not say no. Notice I didn't say they said yes, but didn't say no was about a 64% of the remaining 64% of the respondents. So yeah, so let's, uh, let's maybe kick off a couple more here. We say, all right, finding empirical probabilities. Let's say this time we have uh, maternity records. We say, so hospital records indicated that maternity patients stayed in the hospital for a number of days shown in this distribution. So let's say we worked in the maternity ward and we, you know, we're trying to always improve our performance and maybe performance we could say is is uh, you know getting people out of the hospital within seven days comfortably not shoving them out the door but you know something like that okay uh, but we say number of days stayed and so you notice I've broken up this distribution into three days stayed four five six and then seven or more so it's an open-ended distribution but our frequencies are over here on the right and so it seems we had 127 we say patients okay 
So based upon these numbers here, you notice that most of them are in between like four or five. We could go through and find the average of this and, and probably, you know, support that claim. But um, essentially, you know, we find these probabilities like find the probability or likelihood that a patient stayed exactly five days. So we say, okay, so probability of five. This would be a simple event because it landed on exactly five. Uh, but we say, okay, so of the 127 respondents, this is our n here, our n. We want to put our frequency within that class of that event. So we say five. Well, we had 56, 56 out of 127. So we are actually going to calculate this. So we say 56 divided by 127. Uh, it's going to be this decimal 0 0.4409. So 0 0.4409 is about appropriate length to go out to point. Oops, let's do this. Uh, 0 0.44409, which is about a 44.09%. So basically what this is saying is, hey, 44.09% of your respondents did stay five days. So that's the likelihood that that might happen in the future. A little bit different. This next one says, find the probability or likelihood that a patient stayed at most four days. So now a few things I want to point out about this. First of all, this is no longer a simple event. This is a compound event. And I could write the words at most in here, but let's think about what the word at most means. It means no more than. Okay, so we say it could be four out of all of our options here in our sample space. It could have been three days. Uh, but we say it could be three or four is another way to write in this instance at most four. So we're going to write uh, less than or equal to four. We can even write less than or equal to four days if we like is our event here. So we say, all right, well, first of all, we say we had 127 respondents. How many stayed four or less? So we'd say you actually have to add up these two classes here, the 32 and the 15. So we say 15 plus 32. So on the top here, it looks like we get uh, 47. 47 out of 127. And so instantly, I know this is going to be less than the last percentage we just found just because it was 47 of 127. That's less than 56. We say 47 divided by 127. We get our decimal here. About 0 0.3700, which is uh, within reason. So we say 0 0.3700. Approximately 37% chance that somebody in the future may just stay at most four days. So now the last two here, we say find the likelihood that a patient stays less than six days. So we say less than. That's interesting. We say less than six days. Not uh, at most six days, but we say less than. So we say less than six days. We're actually going to have to sum quite of a few, quite a few of these. Our original 15 uh, in our third class, or class of three days, class of four days was uh, 32 uh, patients in five days. Okay, so which would be our last one here? Say 56, uh, because 56 is how many people we had in a, in a five-day stay uh, class. We said less than six days. So we're not going to count the six. So we say, uh, let's see that last 47 plus another 56 is 90. 103, so we have 103 of our 127. So we say less than six days. This is probably a pretty good chance that you're not going to have somebody stay more, six or more days. But let's go take a look at what the chances are. We say 103 uh, divided by 127. And so we get about 81.10% about chance. Uh, so 81.10. So about 81 and a tenth percent chance. Whatever. Uh, so pretty good chance they're going to stay less than six days according to what we saw, you know, based upon our observation. And the last one here says find the likelihood that a patient stayed at least five days. So now at least, we say five or more. So since it is equal to five or more, we say greater than or equal to five, which would be basically the probability of uh, five, six, or seven or more. So five would be 56 people, uh, 19 people stayed six days, and then we say five people stayed seven or more days. So 56 plus 19 would be 75, plus another five is 80 of a 127. So five or more days, um, we're getting, a, let's see here, 80 divided by 127, 80 divided by 127. Um, about a 62.99% chance. So uh, we get that written down here, 0.6299 is approximately 62.99% chance. Not bad, it's better than half the time. Uh, I wouldn't say better. It's probably not a good thing if you're staying in a hospital five or more days after giving birth. Or at least I don't know, but the five is probably okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so there's one more thing I want to point out before we leave this video, and actually it's not empirical probability, but we talk about subjective probability. The three main types are classical, empirical, and subjective. The classical was my last video where we talked about how everything is equally likely to occur. You know, rolling a die, flipping a coin. 
and it's theoretical. Like things don't have to happen that way experimentally. They may happen that way, whereas empirical probability is very much we did the experiment, we observed it, we have the numbers, and based upon these numbers, what can we um, produce as a likelihood for an event occurring? So now the last one, subjective, is basically subjective means opinion based. So these are like uh, meteorologists, these are uh, doctors, these are, uh, you know, sports casters that are saying things like, you know, I think that a uh, certain team, for example, has a 70% chance of winning the championship, you know, this this year in the pennant. Or, you know, a doctor saying the surgery's got probably like a 20% chance of survival. You know, like that's probably based upon a rate, which is a number which would be experimental, not subjective. But they, you know, giving their, you know, warmness on a scale of 1 to, you know, 100. Now, keep in mind, subjective probability is like the, it's not worthless, I mean, I'm going to listen to a doctor, but at the same time, you have to understand humans are horrible at probability. So, you know, as a last thought of experiment, you know, if I said, are there more seven-letter words that, you know, end in I and G, or are there more seven-letter words that have their fifth letter as I? You know, and most people say, you know, more seven-letter words end in I and G, but what you have to realize is, of all the seven-letter words that end in ing, the fifth letter is I. So, like, you have all of the seven-letter words that end in ing, plus all the seven-letter words that don't end in ing but still have their fifth letter as i is way more of those it's just that we easily recall words that end in ing so for example one way we uh, fail to estimate probabilities is we overrepresent things in our mind that are easily to you know easily able to recall so for example you know you see a lot of shootings in the news and you say oh man like shootings are happening all the time now it's just that you can easily recall it what i'm getting at is this uh, offering your opinion on, on a likelihood of an event occurring is probably not a very good idea. So I would suggest that you use experimental probabilities, get the numbers, or if it's a classical case, then we could just come up with a theoretical probability. So um, good luck on your homework.